Hey, everybody, and welcome to Monadnock Business Spotlight. My name is Luca Paris. I am the president and the CEO of the Greater Monadnock Collaborative, your regional chamber of commerce. And thank you to Monadnock Broadcasting Group and uh, WKBK Studios for uh, putting on this show on a regular basis. It's Monadnock Business Spotlight, where we take the people, the uh, organizations, the businesses who all helped New Hampshire's Monadnock region thrive and grow and just become a great place to live, work, visit, and learn here. So it's a, it's really incredible to have this show and be able to tell you the stories of the people that are here. And we've done everything from nonprofits to small organizations to startup businesses. And they're all members of the Greater Monadnock Collaborative, that regional chamber of commerce that I mentioned. And one of the things we love to do here is connect you with those people, not only learn about what their business is and what they do, but also to learn about who they are and what their passions are around the area. And there's very few people as passionate as giving back at, at giving back to the community as our guest today and the organization he works for. Uh, so we're so excited to have Larry Munson, the general manager from Monadnock Ford located, I guess it's in Swansea, right, Larry? It is in Swansea. Yeah, so Larry, it's great to have you on. Thank you for being here. Uh, you're here with, you know, you give me give me a hat and everything. I get I get all goodies when you come in. Larry, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, what you do for the community. And tell everybody about Monadnock Ford and who you are. Let's start with that, right? Well, okay. <laughs> thank you for having me, first of all. And, uh, you know, Monadnock Ford, I've been with the organization going on two years in September. And I've been part of the community for over 10. Right. And I absolutely, lo- absolutely love working with an organization that is as passionate about making a good work environment as they are being a member of the community. Right. You know, those two go really hand in hand. And if you don't like what you do for a living, you're not going to want to give back. Exactly. Yeah. And and the thing about um, Mananak Ford and you, I, there are a lot of people who say I'm out at a lot of things. I don't think anybody <laughs> between you and Samantha are out as much as the two of you. Uh, and, and I see you everywhere. I feel like you're at something at two, three nights a week. We, yes. <laughs> my wife and I, we go to a lot of events. Obviously, she works for Savings Bank of Walpole, uh, as you know. And right. uh, so she does a lot of the community engagement. I go with her on a lot of events, the chamber events. Um, I'm also on the board of trustees for MC Squared. Right. Um, making community connections. Um, We've had them on the show, too. And a great organization. Yeah, Elizabeth is awesome and yep. everybody there. So we do a lot of things throughout the week, throughout <clears> the month, and then tack on top of that the Monadnock Ford organization and what we do there uh, <laughs> because we do try to make sure that Monadnock Ford uh, gives back as not just from me as the general manager but all the employees participate. So I try to go with them as well. So we're busy. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's let's start with Monadnock Ford. Uh, it's relatively new, right, uh, within the last – 2017? It's that far back yeah. already? So it, yeah. it, no, we're, 2000 – yes, we're 2017, tell, yeah. 2016. I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's somewhere around there. So that that it's and, – and in essence, we're recording this in, in 24. So when you hear about it any other time, you know, you, you do the math whenever you're listening. But um, – it, it came in with a big bam, bang. Uh, Vadim was really and wanted to get involved, got you on board, and you guys have been uh, a great team going forward. But talk about the experience at Monadnock Ford because you could buy a car. Now you could buy a car on, on Amazon. So talk about the experience about buying a car there and what, what it's like working with you guys. We want to make an experience that is <clears> different because <throat> you're right. You can buy a car anywhere. Right. Everybody sees what you pay for a brand new car. Everybody right. gets the same inv- invoice or uh, rebates, or uh, what they get in the vehicle. You buy a Lariat, it's a Lariat, no matter where you buy it in right. the country, okay? Uh, but the big thing is, is how are you treated? You know, okay. and that's really what we are about. So uh, I'm going to give you an example of what we have tried to do in our communication. We are a full disclosure dealership, which means nothing hidden, no games, no gimmicks. You don't have to, if you want to know what the number is, the number is there. We're going to tell you it going to have it there in writing. Uh, we don't go this back and forth game where you have to, you know, beat me up or beat yourself up right. about to get the best deal. We're going to give you uh, a really good deal up front. We're going to make sure that you get a fair number for your trade and you're going to know how we come up with those numbers. There's no, there's no science to it. There's, it's real, it's really simple. You can see it online from KBB, uh, Kelly Blue Book. You can see it on 
uh, all the the guides of what you should right, be paying right, right, for right, a car. Right. Um, but on top of that is is we're going to treat you with respect. You know, if you are buying a car, there's a reason why you're you're buying a car. Mm-hmm. You know, you had a change in life. You you know, you got divorced. You got married. You you got a promotion in a job. Uh, maybe you decided to work from home and you don't have to drive as many miles. Or you wanted to go back to the office. There's a reason in your life that you've changed. Maybe you outgrew the car seats. Maybe you're having a midlife crisis. Right. Right? And uh, you need to get that uh, Mustang out of the garage. You definitely need yeah. one of those. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. We're going to provide uh, the selection, the experience, uh, right. the, a, a, a transparent trade value evaluation, um, and then treat you with respect so that you can make an informed and intelligent decision. That's what we're about. So you do. So you take trades. That means you sell the used cars too, right? Yep. So how how does that work? I mean, because I guess I I don't get involved in buying cars. My wife does it all for us, so it's really easy. It's weird, right? Because usually you don't think of it in that dynamic. But when when people are coming to you and wanting to find a car, uh, and they don't know whether they should go used or new, what's that experience like? And I and I don't even know if I'm asking the right question. You but are I because yeah. it's the experience should be the same whether you're buying a five thousand dollar. It needs a lot of work. Yeah. And, okay. And, and so or previously you're paying, owned, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or you're spending a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a car. Right. The experience Excellent. is still the same uh, because you work hard for your money. Right. And you're buying this car for a reason. Now, what we try to do is we go through every last used car to make sure that it's something that we can represent. We put a guarantee behind that. We want to make sure that if you nice. buy a car, we're going to make sure that it's not only passed a state inspection, but it's been reset. So, you know, just because they changed the oil on a sticker doesn't mean they actually did it before they traded it in. Right. right we're right, going to reset right. the oil. We're going to make sure all the filters are changed or the wiper blades are, are new. We're going to make sure that we do a full inspection on the vehicle to make sure what's right, what's wrong, or, or, or what needs to be addressed in the future. Um, and we're going to try to reset as new as possible uh, on every used car that we possibly can. Now, there are some cars we can't, and there is a market for people that want the cars that are in the two to three to four to five thousand dollar range that don't pass safety that they want to go work on. They're the project vehicles, um, and we will wholesale those after about two weeks. Oh, I see. Do not keep them. <clears throat> uh, we have a limited window. Uh, people come in, they say, "Hey, I'm looking for that two thousand dollar." Uh, we call them a lumpy, you know, a, a car that needs work. Is that a cool – is that a trade name? Is like that – yeah, it's like what they use it, in the industry? It's just one of those. It's like, hey, you know, I'm not looking for a new gem. I'm just right, need, right. need something yeah. I can polish. It's pretty much every car that Dan Mitchell owns. <laughs> we won't tell him about that. <laughs> They're called lumpies. I'm going to do that when I see him next time. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to have those. We're going to make sure that you know what you're getting. Yeah. We hide nothing. Um, and then also if we've inspected it, if it's something that we've decided we're going to send to the auction and right. they want to buy it for auction prices, right, 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 then we right. give the cu- uh, customer first right of refusal. Yeah. Yeah. So it, and, and you work hard with people when they're bringing in trades because that's a, a – very few people are coming in not trading in cars to get the next one, right? It's a – Well, what we've seen with COVID is people have held on to their vehicles far longer than what ah. they originally planned on. Trade cycles were uh, 39 to 30, you know, 40 months. Right. Um, and now they're going into that 60, 72 month. And if they bought that used, you know, three or four years old, some of those cars have 150, 200,000 miles on. Them. Right. So now they're in a position where they're going to need to buy a car because they don't want to put that 10, 11, 12, 14, $15,000 to right. fix the car and keep it new. Um, because most cars aren't classic cars. Most cars right. are <laughs> tools, right? Yeah. They get you to and from a place, right? They get you to and from a place, and they right. have a purpose. Right. Yep. And and when they're out of that purpose, you have to trade up. Yep. You have to decide what you're going to do. What you're doing next, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, when, when we talk and we started this, we're talking about just how involved Mananoc Ford is in the community and how, I mean, personally involved you are. Yeah. Um, again, you you go out to all these things. You're on more than one board. You've, you've been a big part of United Way, Mananoc United Way over the years. Um Talk about because you, you know you brought up classic cars too, and we're working on something together this year while we're while we're taping this uh, with a, a sh- car show bringing it downtown to Keene. But talk about your car shows and what you you've done in the past, yep, and kind of what your future is for those. So uh, each year we do a car show. We usually host it either at the uh, the the fairgrounds or at the dealership, right? 
Um, and we try to get anywhere between 50 to 60 cars uh, on site. They could be a classic car, hot rod, you know, maybe just a tricked out late model car that somebody's really proud of right. um, that they can come in and we try to raise money for different organizations uh, so that we can give back to the community. Right. Last year we raised, I think, $700 uh, with our car show. The year before we raised just under 1000 Um This year – um, as you mentioned, uh, 2024, in case you're listening to this later. Yeah, yeah. All right, May 5th. And hopefully it's a tradition. Yeah. Well, I mean, so that's our goal, right? That's, that's the hope is um, we are a Monadnock community. And where is the center of that community? We'd like to say Monadnock Ford, but well, we know yeah. it's not. Right. Uh, it's Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, everybody comes to the metropolis of, you <laughs> yeah, know, that. did I say that right? <laughs> did I didn't say that right. Uh, of of Keene, New Hampshire. And so – uh, when you brought this idea to me to say, hey, you do a car show every year. Why don't we do this in Keene? We right. used to do it, and that was before my time. Before mine, too. And, I think it just ended, right? It just sounds like, okay, what a great opportunity <clears throat> to bring people, and not only people into the community, but include all the different organizations that live, yep. house, eat, breathe in downtown Keene. Yeah, and so uh, for, for people, because we are airing this uh, right away uh, on May 5th, uh, which is Cinco de Mayo, just happens to be a Sunday in 2024. Uh, we're going to be bringing probably more than 75 cars this year. I think, I am you think thinking you're up, up, up we're going to be pushing 100. Wow. Um, we're probably looking for overflow at this point. Yeah. I've got roughly about 68, 67 cars that are registered. That's amazing. Um, and again, this is a fair weather event. Because if it rains, people Biggest will thing. not come yeah. out. You're never going to see my car out in the rain. No. Uh, you, well. She doesn't like to be out there. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> that means you're driving with the top down, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I rarely drive with the top up. I, I have a 71 Cutlass. Um, it's uh, black with gold racing stripes, and, and the top goes down, and it likes to stay down. Not on purpose. Well, no, on purpose, on purpose. not by accident. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's great to drive around, and I know – we might have the Ted's Ford Bronco is going to be out there, which yep. is kind of cool. So I love to have a Ford Bronco out there. Well, well, that's the thing I wanted to mention is the fact that this car show, <laughs> we always do a car show every year, and it really does revolve around Ford. Right. Um, but Ford is a national brand. The right. number one local national logo business, it's the most recognized name in the world. Wow. Okay. And, yeah. and most people don't imagine. realize yeah. that. So we want to be part of the community, and this goes beyond just a Ford Mustang or an F-150. This goes beyond anything that you would have in your garage. Yeah. This is Cutlass. This is Chevy. This is – we're expanding this car show to incorporate anybody yeah. and everybody. Right. And you know, what do you, what do you have in your garage? Yeah. Are you proud of that car? Pull it out. You know, spit shine it. Let's make it look pretty, and let's get it out and, and show people. It starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, check in starts at seven thirty. We all know how this works, so right. make sure you're there a little early to get cars parked. Uh, eight till noon. Yep. We are clearing out at noon, and you can stay downtown and enjoy the shops as they open roughly about eleven. Um, I went door to door and visited all the shop owners a couple That's awesome. weeks ago. Yeah. They all know it's happening. Several of the shops have decided to open early. That's awesome. And then several of them open at their normal time, which right. is roughly about eleven o'clock. Uh, so. Uh, enjoy lunch. Enjoy Cinco de Mayo downtown. Yeah. You know, walk the shops. Enjoy the outdoors. I, we're hoping we get good weather, but take that extra few minutes to let spring set in your soul. I love that. You know what I really would find exciting about that day, and I and I'm I'm imagining this is going to happen, but I I can't imagine it not. Here's the here. W- wait for this one. Is when the cars leave at twelve o'clock, the parade that leaves out of there is going to be amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're eight to 12. The cars will be stagnant in the parking spaces. You yep. can walk around downtown. But as they're leaving, because we're going to expect everyone to stay the whole time, at least the cars. But as they're leaving, you're watching this parade of classic cars going around Central Square, coming back down or heading out. It, it's going to be amazing to watch. If you I, really want the best seat in the house is yeah. go pick a seat down on the square Yep. because we are not actually closing the square. Right. We're, we're not closing any streets either, no, right? Yeah. No, it's all open. We're going to only close the <clears throat> outside lanes. We mm-hmm. have booked 100 spots. The city's allow us, a city of Keene has allowed us 100 spots right, right, right. Uh, to fill. And I think we're actually going to fill – all of them. Yeah, that's going to be you know, amazing. <laughs> we're looking at uh, making sure that we can expand it uh, down Washington and Court Street as well as some of the other side streets. Yeah. Um, we are taking over railroad, 
Railroad Square. Railroad Square. That's easy for you to say. I can't say it, I don't think. <laughs> uh, we're going to have uh, a NASCAR for Motocraft yeah. and Quick Lane yeah. uh, that they're bringing in, and we're going to have a display for that on Railroad Square. That's going to be our central location. That's awesome. There will be awards and prizes, 13 best of show and class uh, really? categories. Yep. Uh, so it's going to be a fun event. It's not going to be um, – we're not going to hang you upside down and fleece you. This is a free event for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, both cars that are being entered as that's well amazing. as those that want to participate and just walk around a great looking car. Yes, that's incredible. And and it goes it goes back to, you know, how involved you are in the community. And and by 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 being out there, putting out the money to help put this together and not expecting anything in return except for making it a great time. That's really what the Midadnock Ford culture is like, right? In the office and everything. Absolutely. Um we we have such a great organization, and I can't take any credit for it. Uh, v- you can. Vadim, How about I give it to you? Oh, thank you. All right, I'll give you uh, some. <laughs> Vadim has created such an awesome environment for the employees to work in. But more impl- importantly, the employees that I work with, day in and day out, they show up early, they, are, they stay late. They make sure that every customer has that type of communication. That's awesome. I want to give you one more example if I can. Oh, yeah. Talk about got- culture change. Yeah. Okay. So we all know. Uh, let's 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 look at what we have to challenge when we know something's broken. Right. Right. Yeah. So when Vadim bought the store, uh, he brought a store that didn't have a fantastic reputation. Okay. So location stays with you. Yep. Okay. It's under new ownership, it's under new name, and that reputation it's hard to change. You know. Right. So we have the, a lot of the same employees. And they used to get four or five surveys every single month, and some of them good, some of them bad. And one bad survey when you're only getting five, that's hard to combat. Right. Well, I am happy to announce that our service and sales teams roughly every month for the last year, year and a half, have gotten 50 to 60 surveys. Wow. Perfect scores. Wow. Now we get one or two. You're not sure. always going to make everybody happy. Right. Um, but the more we communicate, the more we talk, the more we tell customers what is happening. Yeah. And you know, it's like going to the dentist. We don't want to go. It's painful. Right. All right. But we all have to go. When a car breaks or you need a new car, it's going to cost you money. Right. Hopefully we can have Ford pay for it yeah. you know, first. Yeah. Um, but if we keep you informed and we let you know what's going on, and customers start getting involved yeah. in that communication, all of a sudden that reputation does change. And and I'm happy to be part of that culture change. That's awesome. And, and to join this team because we have a group of people that, again, I can't say it enough. They come in, they put their heart and their soul into fixing cars, finding the correct parts, or even finding you the right car you want to take home right. and get you into that either payment or, you know, Get you back to work. Get you back on the road. I mean, a lot, let's face it. A lot of these trucks that we sell are super duties that are business trucks. And when they're broken, they're out of business, you're out of work. Yeah. And we understand that. We want to get that back on the road as soon as we possibly can. And we want to communicate that with you. And when you have that experience, I want you to tell everybody about it. So uh, I would say the the biggest takeaway from this, as I, if I'm a listener right now, is just go and say hello. If you're looking for a car, because you're going to be shopping around. Everybody yep. does it, right? Unless you're a Ford fan for life, then you're going to go straight to you guys. But if you don't know what you want, just at least sit down and talk with you guys, right? And, yeah. and see what's out there. Uh, I, I'm the guy that's going to tell you what you don't want to hear. Right. Okay. And that is the truth. And yeah. and sometimes, you know, what you're looking for is not something that I can provide. Right. We have uh, the ability to pull over 600 vehicles out of our sister stores, um, and we do have stores in Connecticut and Rhode Island that we can pull from. Even when we pull those cars, we're going to run those through an inspection process because our quality of standard wants to be – I want to meet that. You know, I right. don't care who else looks <clears throat> at it from the sister stores. Um, we're going to look at that car. We're going to say, okay, I can sell you this car. It's a, a GMC or it's a Chevy. It's a you know a used late model or even 80,000-mile vehicle. We're going to make sure that that vehicle is something that when I see you out on the road, you're happy to wave back. That's awesome. Let's talk about – you talked about the culture and the the amount of people. I know a lot of guys that work there. Um, Like anybody else, I'm sure you're always looking for people to work, right? Uh, Yeah, like every other business in town. And and having uh, having guys in the service department is a really big, important part of it. 
Um, and is it is it CJ that runs a service or who? It, so we have Michelle Curtis. Saudi. Oh, Michelle. Okay. Uh, who are, I'm not sure who does what there. But. You know, so CJ is in our marketing. He, okay. works, he works for the mothership, if you will. And then because um, I know CJ and Curtis. Yep. And yeah. Curtis is our service manager. Okay. Perfect. Um, so I've got Michelle Saudi who has come up through the ranks. She actually started as a service advisor yeah. and became a service manager and now is my fixed ops director. So she actually runs Excellent. both parts and service. Wow. Yeah. And uh, she, she does an awesome, awesome job. Um, her ability to rally the troops and, uh, you know, her and Curtis and Gary, who's my parts manager, their ability to kind of rally each other. Let's say the chips are down. And we had a situation yesterday where we had five cars that had to get through the shop. It's running on 430. Uh, we're getting ready to close at 5 o'clock. And, you know, the troops had to be rallied because people were depending on it. Sure. So what happened? Everybody decided to stay late, get those cars done. That's and, awesome. you know, make sure that, that we could hit our deadlines and delivery. Um, and they took time mm-hmm. out of their own personal lives to do that. And not a lot of shops will do that. They're right. going to say, hey, the bell's ringing at 502. I'm out of here. Yeah. You'll see afterburners on the driveway. Well, yeah, I, I got to tell you that as as a person who just buys cars or gets them fixed, that's always a concern, right? You yep. always think, okay, it's quitting time. People are going to leave on you. and But I need that car, right? And so that kind of care and, and understanding for us is special. So thank you for that. I really mean that. We also provide a service called... Uh, red cap. Okay. And you'll see uh, Kathy uh, who is driving around in our shuttle and it's got a big red cap on the hood and she has actually a red hat like the one <laughs> I gave you uh, that she wears. And she does what's called pickup and delivery. So let's face it. Our schedules are extremely busy. You mm. work full yeah. time and you can't get your car picked up or you can't be there on time or after hours. Um, we'll actually pick up your car. We'll service your vehicle. And we'll re-deliver it to where we picked it up from. Oh, that's huge. Um, you know, we had we had one customer that – son's in high school. Right. Right? And can't leave to come pick up his vehicle. So exactly. we picked it up in the parking lot. Dad paid for it over the phone with a credit card. Right. And we re-delivered it for his son for, for pickup by the time he was out of school. Um, and it, it doesn't matter if it's Kathy or Michelle or Curtis. Anybody's willing to come help – Get that and facilitate that because that's a two man process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you need um, someone to drive the car back. Exactly right. And Mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that all of our customers are taken care of that way. And that's the type of service and and quality of care that we want to give our customers. I I knew this this show would go by fast, but we're coming up in the last minute. Give everybody your contact information where Manadnock Ford is, and how to get in touch with you. You have like 30 seconds. This is real easy. Manadnock Ford, 119 Manadnock Highway. Our phone number is 603-283-5900, or you can contact us at manadnockford.com. And tell everybody one more thing about, so May 5th, 2024, we're doing the first downtown car show. Tell everybody, you know, briefly about that. Come on down to uh, Keene, New Hampshire. Bring your classic, your custom, your your jewel car, the car you love, and enter it into our car show, Cinco de Mayo, uh, Cruising Maine, brought on by the Collaborative in Monadnock Ford yeah. in downtown Keene. So, and, 8 a.m. And they have to register. Uh, so oh, you can try lot, not to. A lot of people are not registering. I know they're going to show up anyway. <laughs> We're going to try to accommodate everybody we possibly can. Awesome. Right now we got 67 people registered, 68. Um, we're expecting 100, maybe a few more than that. Thank you so much, Larry. That's the end of this show. We're right up at the end. I'm Luke in Paris. Have a great time. We'll see you on Manadnock Business Spotlight.